welcome to my studio. So today's painting is going to be done on a stretched, ready prepared canvas. Uh, it's, um, it's 11 inches by 14 inches. And uh, we'll have a little look at the palette to see what colours we're going to use. But first, I'll just tell you the, a little bit about the subject. The, this is going to be a scene in uh, Tasmania. Actually, it's going to be part of my driveway. Uh, so it's going to be trees and, like I say, a little bit of driveway and some flowers and uh, it'll be quite colourful. Uh, a couple of my videos on my channel, uh, I do show uh, different um, bits of video around the property here and uh, you'll see that it's, well, my wife is the gardener actually, but um, yes, it's very colourful. So... Uh, I'll just show you the colours that I have on the palette today. So on the palette we have uh, just plain old black and we have phthalo blue, we have burnt umber, burnt sienna, we have china red and this is yellow ochre and we have fluorescent yellow and white and from those colors i can make it well pretty well every color under the under the sun okay so i'm going to start by doing a little uh sketch now i the part of the driveway uh the house is off down here in the distance but uh, i want a horizon line which is just off centre which is about there and there are shrubs that actually come all the way down here like this and uh, but there are huge trees here um, so trees and the driveway it comes about here like this I'll just draw it roughly like that and uh, so I'm going to try and get this perspective right as well so opening out here a little bit I don't want to make it all about the actual driveway uh, like I say there's, there's, there's a couple of really big gums here um, with uh, branches going out across here like this and that way and of course there's lots of uh, shrubs all the way along here actually uh, so of course there's going to be shrubs and there's a lot of flowers all along here and there's flowers a big group of flowers here and uh, more shrubs in the middle here and I think as far back as, as here and there's another fence line just off here which goes into the top paddock. Um, okay so basically that's going to be a picture. So um, I always like to start with the sky so um, we'll start putting a bit of paint on. Uh, I'm actually going to start with white and um, then we're going to put some blue on top of that we're going to I'm using acrylic paints and with acrylic paints you have to layer the paints on top of each other and uh, sometimes you, you blend them in as well so uh, that's the process we're going to start now so what I like to do because this is a ready gesso uh, canvas you can tell by the sound of it as well it's like very very fine sandpaper actually so what I do is I get a spray bottle with a very set very fine and just spray a fine mist on there and just spread it around just get it damp This stops your, your paints drying out too fast and it allows you to blend them as well together. 
In actual fact, I'm going to start with the blue and then I'm going to progress to white rather than the other way around. Uh, my favourite brush for doing uh, sky and any sort of background actually on a relatively small canvas like this it is this one. It's a hog hair brush. It is an artist, artist brush. I'm just going to get it slightly wet and just wipe it dry a little. So I'm going to get my, my blue and a little bit of white. So if you notice I've got blue and white on the brush at the same time and I'm not going to, to mix it on the palette. So I'm just going to basically slap it on there. Don't be afraid to do this, you can, you know, sort of any, any old hair like this. And what we're after is actually blending it slightly on the canvas. There we go. I want it to come lighter as we come down. over here because this is going to be a background color like this that and we're going to get a little bit of white and we're going to put in here because this is the bright area of our picture. There's a light source coming from here. In actual fact, further up here is my workshop and the main house is, is up over there as well. A bit more white in there like that. Drag it across. Now you notice we're mixing the colours on the actual, a little bit more white there, in the middle, a bit more. Nothing is set in concrete with painting, you know, you can change it at any time, especially painting with acrylics. Okay, so that's a bit of sky and uh, background. I'm just going to clean that brush a minute. So the next thing I'm going to do is get some little bit of burnt amber and a little tiny bit of, bit of burnt sienna, a little bit of blue, make a nice dark colour, like a browny earthy dark colour, a little bit more blue I think, more bluey then brownie I think. Load the brush up and come in here. Oh it's too green. Okay. Yeah, this will do. This is just a background colour. Just crisscross like this. What you're actually doing is blocking in the background. Like this. Little crisscrosses. And the same on the other side. Start down here. So what you're actually doing is covering the, the, the canvas so there's no actual white this is fine
real dark area there. Now what I'm going to do is dry that pad off before I go any further. And to dry it off quickly what I use is just a hairdryer. Okay, so I'm going to introduce another little brush, which is one of my favourites actually, and this is a, a fan brush. Um, this is a much bigger fan brush, but I like using this little one, especially for working on a canvas this size. Now, we're going to just put an indication of a few clouds in the, in the background. So we're just going to load, load the fan brush up with some white paint and we're just going to dance it around a bit like this there and possibly here a bit more paint on it possibly down here like this over here like this Something like that. Okay, now before that dries, what we're going to do, I use two different brushes for this. And this is one, it's a two inch, fairly good uh, brush. Just come here and just use the top corner of it and just move it around in little circles on the bottom side of. The cloud like this and you can see it washes washes it in a little bit on the top side as well not much just a little bit and same with these it's just an indication of clouds more than anything Of course, clothes are very irregular. And also over here. It's another little brush I sometimes use as well, just to get a bit of detail in there. And Take out any brush marks if they're in there. Like that area there. Like I say, we just want an indication of clouds because most of them are going to be covered up with the trees anyway. But some of some of them um, are going to be seen through the trees. Okay, so I've just got some dark green on my brush now. I'm just going to make some crisscrosses in this area here. Like this. And the same over this side here. This is the dark background of trees and shrubs. Okay, so we're going to lighten the next layer up now. So we're going to put um, some a little bit of white with that.
I don't want to cover the whole area up with green paint. I just want to. I'm going to go into some browns in a minute. Using the same brush. I'll switch back to the fan brush now. So just dab it on there. Okay, so there's enough background colour. I just wash that out. Okay, so that's enough dark background colours. Uh, now I'm going to make a. I think I better put a bit of road in now. So that's going to be. Um, let's get some more white on my palette. A little bit more black, I think. Uh, make it. Good grey mixture up. You'll notice there's little bits of black and there's little bits of white. I don't want one solid grey. So what I'm doing is I'll just put a like an undercoat down there of a grey colour because it's um, it's tarmac, but I don't want it too dark. Just scrub it in there like this. A bit of texture in it, like so. And I could probably put a little bit of scrub a little bit of black in there as well. Like this. Make it look as though it's been used, and it has been well used. Of 
course it gets dusty as well so we'll to indicate a bit of dust at the center can actually put a little bit of whiter or lighter area here because the dust always gathers in the middle of the track or driveway something like that and of course where the, the vehicle's tyres go it's a darker colour I'm fine with that at the moment Okay, we dried that off a bit. Now I've just mixed up a bit of um, sort of clay, browny, earthy colour that I'm just going to put in along here, just along the edge of the road here, like this. I think I need to get a little bit more paint on my brush, a little bit of greening with it too. Just along here. Like this. Because actually running down the side here, there's a bit of a bit of a drain, bit of a gully, bit of a what they call a spoon drain. Which runs there like that. I don't want to have too much attention on that because there's a lot of plants that uh, actually droop over it and it's partially sort of um, obscured. Just a little bit more there like that. I think art is all about really a representation of not you know, I don't do sort of photographic realization art. Um, that's uh, not not me. <laughs> but uh, something that's sort of pleasing to the eye. And you're not supposed to look at any painting close up. It should be two meters or two yards away from it. And then your eyes tend to, you know, blend all the colours in and it makes it look much more complex than it actually is. Some that brown in here as well, I think. It's a nice little brush actually. Short, soft bristles. A little bit of brown in here. A lot of... Um, all different colours of material. Okay, so we'll give that brush a bit of a wash out. Don't keep your brushes in water either. Wash them out and dry them, put them aside. It'll last you a lot longer. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is get some of this uh, lighter green and um, put in here a foreground. A bit lighter green, a bit lighter green. I think actually I should start using my fan brush. In actual fact, let's get some trees in there. Or indication of trees anyway. So we'll clean that one out a minute. And we're going to get some burnt amber, a little bit of black, a bit more black, more amber. And we're just going to go, we come here and we're going to go straight down like that little bit of a curve at the bottom. I 
and uh, actually it'll disappear in the foliage up there I think but he's a bit that wide just bring it down it gets thicker at the bottom Tree trunks are fairly easy. It's a big old gum. Mix up a bit more black, a bit more umber. Good thick dollop of paint. Uh, come down like this. Something like that. Sort of flares off into the Bottom like that. Nice big old gum. And of course, gum trees come in many different colours. I'll show you how I do bark. So that's the base colour of our tree. A little bit thicker, maybe. Up here. Is okay. Of course, from that you have limbs coming out. A bit more black, I think. Big old limb here, just like this, which splits off like this. Doesn't matter too much with uh, with with limbs because uh, the foliage is gonna. I got a better brush to do those actually. Let's get my let's get my limb brush out. Here we go. Okay. It's my what I normally do for limbs. And, things like that. So I suppose it's a very short dagger brush. I'm going to leave that like that. There's another one here, maybe. Here. And over this side. Actually, the thick one coming out there. Okay. That's my German Shepherd asking for his lunch, I believe. Okay, so without cleaning my brush, I've just picked up some grey and I'm going to go now into the into here and because gum trees get some brown. Gum trees are browny, and they're you know they're, they're all sorts of colours. So we'll just reflect that now. A bit of just take it, tone it down a little bit. A little bit of brown like this. And they're very sort of. I suppose you could use the word mottled. <clears throat> it's 
So this is barky colour of a gum tree. A bit darker in places, like this. A bit mottly. And actually some of the smaller branches do go black, but uh, you can see it's a fairly good representation of a tree. There's actually a smaller one next to it right here. Um, I might put that one in. A uh, bit of black, a bit of brown. Uh, he's just in here. He's a lot smaller actually. He's set back a little bit further like that. He's only about that size trunk. He goes, I think he's, he's bent over a little bit too. He goes up that way, somewhere like that. Like that. And I can. Do the same effect with that one, bit of black, bit of brown. And I think there's another limb coming off him here across that way. Okay. Okay. I'll uh, we'll put a bit of Actually, let's get the fan brush going. Lots of grasses around here. Of course there's a lot of foliage. Um, actually before I start doing the foliage I just want to put, put a few Let's get a smaller brush on that. A bit of line of brush here. water over that. Make it a bit more inky. There's lots of shrubbies sort of things and in here
indication of stalks of and of course they're not they're seldom straight so That's all we need, a few of those, and now we can get the fan brush and really go to town. So, the, so far all that is background colours, because so they're darker. As you come forward they get lighter. Um, I don't want to start off too yellowy, so we're going to go sort of a a mid green, not too much in the brush. Like this. Remember what I said about the clouds in the background? They're going to uh, sort of be there, but you know, you're going to see them through the trees. I love these fan brushes actually. And of course, in real life, you do see sky through the trees. Don't have to go too crazy and make it muddy. Gonna put some golds in here now over this side. Too much paint in the brush. A few goldy coloured shrubs here and they sort of work their way to come kind of ready down this end or a ready colour Darker, real darker colour here, real dark, sort of grey, greeny down here. I'll show you why in a minute. Ready earthy browny here. This is a real Australian colour here. Like this. The undergrowth and the bushes in the background. And even up into the trees. Get some of this colour, some of the dead leaves, like this. Cross all the way over to this side. 
and you, you really don't want to cover all of the all of the sky in you want to be able to see the sky just glimpsing through the trees like that okay it's really all about color now then i want that same color sort of a, a lighter brown in with this as well just a hint of it You don't want to cover up all of your sticks either. Okay, so now we're going to do some detail work. Here is a Small shrubby tree. Oh, a little bit of okay. So now we get the fan brush and we start putting some detail on here. brush up too much for this one. Trying to keep my head and my nose out the way. It's a sort of mustardy yellowy kind of foliage on this one. I'm just using the very tips. I'm just turn the turn it around to give a random type of deposit. Like that. It comes up to a little bit like this. A little bit more yellowy, and I think towards the top, a little bit more yellow. Very bright, this tree actually. But it's not a tree, it's a shrubby bush type thing, but it's fairly tidy like this. That one right there, and let me see. Uh, I want some green. Yeah, then so I want uh, yellow and blue to make a nice bit of green up. Fairly vibrant green. All the way down here, sort of a and do this with the fan brush. Yes, we're going to be okay. With the darker colours is the background colour. So this is green leaf foliage of I actually don't know what plants they are. But they give, there is a mixture of plants, I think. And this also, this side here, 
probably should put this green on first. It doesn't matter. Like this. Oh, there's another shrub to go in there too. Um, but that's okay. This green actually hangs down over on over the um, spoon drain that goes runs down through here. In actual fact, there's a drain that goes underneath the um, the driveway just down here. This is slightly dipped. I didn't actually manage to get that in there, but it's okay. This is all really about colour. And again, this type of green foliage in here. Grasses up trunk of the tree. Like this. Sorry about the shadow. I can't really do much about that at the moment. I should, probably should have brought another light in here. Like that. I've just got a dual high powered LED from over the back over there uh, illuminating this. A uh, bit of yellow in here as well. Look like this. Because if you look at grasses, and, you know, there's browns and there's, you know, all sorts of different colours. All mixed in. Okay, so we've got some more detail on this side now. Lighter. Lighter green, just the tips of the fan brush. On the very tops of the bushes, not the, the bottoms, but the very tops. Like this. It's just to bring them up slightly. And some yellow. I don't want to, so I'm not taking removing the colour off the brush because I want to mix it on the palette here. Actually, this is a wattle tree here or a wattle bush, as it were, and um, of course they go yellow and green. What I said about the clouds, you know, basically you're going to paint over them. Uh, I'm leaving this dark in here because it's, you know, sort of shaded. Uh, the sun is actually coming from oh, this direction because it rises in the east, which is this side, comes over and sets in the west, which is over there. So the light is coming through the trees down through this way. Just here, and what I want to do is some very thin lines like this. Actually, a lot thinner than that. Let's probably use another brush. Let's go over here. That's better. A bit of water on that too. Make it more inky. 
There we go. And here. Like this. Um, stems of plants actually we're going to put some flowers on top of these in a minute of course another straight they're all over the place like this But what we have here, in actual fact, I'm going to load this brush up and just dab to indicate um, whatever plants they are, like this. Fairly deliberate. random sort of shapes like this and over this far side, there's some here too. Just take your time and detail like this. It um, it does pay off in the uh, long run. Okay, well, I'll leave this area here, and I want to leave that area here. Because this, this is a detail brush that I'm using, very handy. Fairly long bristles on it, but they come to a point. Now there. Let's load this colour up. Because right here... Making these more elongated than just a dab. And grouping them together quite nicely. Do a little bit more on that one, I think. Oh, that's my. 85 kilo marimo. Okay. And 
there are some more here as well. Oops. Actually, I might change to a, a point. Okay. And actually, all the way up through here is a sea of colour. And well, I'm going to start with the red. Like this. Pretty random because there's some orange and some blue um, flowers. I don't know what they are in amongst these as well. So I'm going to try and leave some gaps to be able to get the other colours in. Just sort of, if you can, sort of dab, sort of, oh, I suppose, bud shapes and of course as they go further away from here they get smaller I use my very fine brush on this for the moment there's a few on this side so I'm going to put these uh, possibly actually over here Just dab, 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 fairly low down, like this. Not to overpower what is already there, but I think the blue and there are blue flowers out there, what they are I don't know, but I don't think they come at the same time as the white ones. But they do come out with the red ones. As you can tell, I don't know too much about plants. Trees I'm not too bad with, because that's wood. But um, actual um, flowering plants. I know, I know some roses, but um, I know where an agapanther is. So I like those plants, but because uh, we've got quite a few of those in the garden too, up the driveway, in fact, not here though, further up round. My driveway is actually half a just over half a kilometre long, which is oh just slightly over a quarter of a mile. Um, of course, being in Australia, Tasmania, everything is you know that much I suppose bigger. You know, there's only twenty five million people living in the whole of Australia and Australia is about the same landmass as North America. So as you can tell everybody, well not everybody, but a lot of people, more people than, uh, than not I suppose, you know the property that they live on is acreage. Okay. Do you know I'm sort of fairly happy with that? 
for a simple painting it's quite complex. Um, I'm going to finish up by putting a shrub in there that uh, is missing. So this is a, I suppose you could call this a strip liner. So I'm going to get some grey. Uh, actually that'll do. Look, I just dropped my brush in the paint. So here, I'm just going to put an indication of a trunk in here. I'm just going to go down behind that. It's an indication. And a couple of branches coming off like this. A little shrubby sort of thing. Okay. And this one is going to be a rainbow shrub type thing, I suppose. Because it's going to be all the colours of the rainbow. And it is in real life. It has yellows, browns, greens, reds. Just like this. I don't want to make it a mud pie, so it cascades down a little like this. Because what happens is some of the some of the little tiny leaves on it are dying off and they go brown and fall off and some are green Let's get a little bit more green here. Just a little indication there. That'll do, I think. And brown, more brown right on the bottoms there, like that. Okay. I think we're going to call that fairly done. So, I hope you uh, enjoy that little bit of painting experience with me and you know there's nothing really difficult about uh, you know art I, I mean I know it's not going <laughs> to win any art competitions or anything like that but it's a nice pleasing uh, little picture and um, you know you don't have to be a major artist to do a you know, a little bit of a painting that's uh, good enough to put up on your, your own wall and please yourself. Um, and doing something like this um, can help you a long way. Uh, I mean, you know the rest of my channel, it's uh, lasers and CNC routers and, and uh, milling machines and what have you. But... 
you know, if you were in the business of being a maker or teaching people to be makers, which is what I do, that can be a quite a big part of that. Uh, because, you know, if you cut something on CNC rotor or uh, a laser for that matter, you can finish it off yourself. You know, you can paint it or you can machine a frame up and put one round one of your pieces of art and sell it as a job lot. So you are adding value to your abilities. Um, failing that, if you just want to do it to pass the time or, you know, a bit of uh, relaxation, there's nothing better. Because at the end of it, you have something to show for it. You know, um, a, a little bit of art. That is quite pleasing. So, if you've liked uh, the little video today, please like and subscribe, and you could consider becoming a patron to my channel, because, uh, you know, these days on YouTube, uh, you know, the, the revenue just isn't there. So, uh, you know, every little helps. Um, I don't actually produce any uh, work for sale out of my workshop. Um, you know, I focus on teaching people how to operate machines, uh, lasers and CNC routers, and painting. Uh, I'm not an expert painter by no stretch of the imagination, but I've got my ideas of how to do it, and uh, you know, I watch a lot of others as well. And uh, of course, the you know. One of the, the best artists to go and watch is Bob Ross. Uh, unfortunately, Bob Ross isn't with us anymore. But I believe there's, there's four or five hundred um, tutorial uh, paintings that he has done. And uh, they're well worth having a look. And, uh, I, you know, I paint actually differently, a lot differently to, to what Bob Ross does. But um, he's uh, one fellow that I do um, watch. So thank you for joining me. And uh, until the next time, bye for now.